Okay, we have a twin integral on the spot. The first one is that we have, hmm. This right here is the hyperbolic version of the tangent x. And for the second one, we have the hyperbolic version of the secant x. And as always, please pause the video and try them first. Okay, hopefully you get the chance to try them. And now let's do this one first. The strategy for this one is very similar to how you will integrate the original tangent x. What we can do for this case is that let's write it as sin x over cos x. And we're just dealing with the hyperbolic version, right? And then we can, of course, do a u sub. I will let u equal to the bottom function, which is cos x, and then differentiating cos. Remember, the derivative cos is actually positive sin. So this right here is just positive sin x, like this, right? And now, as we can see, this right here is nicely equal to our du, and then on the bottom is, of course, that's a u. So we get the integral 1 over u, and all that is our du, so let's put it on the side. And then when we integrate 1 over u, we get natural log of u, and the absolute value like this, right? So that's pretty much it. But we are going to go back to the x world, so put this in, so we actually get natural log, and the input is actually cos x. Now, the truth is, for cos x, this right here is always positive, so you don't need to use the absolute value. You can just put down a parenthesis, and we are done. So we can just put down a plus c, and that's it, right? Cos x is always positive because this is e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2, so it's always positive, right? Now, let's have a look with the hyperbolic version of the secant. You might want to try it with the way that you are doing with the integral of secant x. But for this one, we are going to approach like that, kind of, you'll see. Anyway, this right here is the integral. For the hyperbolic secant, this is just 1 over cos x, that's okay, dx. And now, the problem with this one is that we do not have the top to be sin x to help us out. So do not try to do u sub right now. It's not going to help yet, right? Well, we want to have more things to work with. Just like the traditional version, when you have an integral, sine and cosine, they are best friends. When we have the hyperbolic version, sin and cos, they are best friends. If we have cos right here now, we want to produce, we want to produce sin to help us out. And to do that, in fact, I'm not going to multiply sin on the top and also on the bottom. Because on the bottom, if I have sin x times cos x, well, that's an identity that I don't know if that will be any good for us. So I will actually multiply this by cos x on the bottom and also on the top, because that way I can produce cos square x on the bottom, and we do know a much better identity to help us out for that. Well, have a look here. This is the integral on the top is cos x, over, on the bottom, notice that this is just cos square x. And let me write this down right here for you guys. Recall that cos square x minus sin x, this is an h, square x, this right here will give us 1, right? And of course, we can just add this on both sides, so we can say cos square x is equal to 1 plus sin x square x. Much better. I will put this down right here, and you see, we still have what? This right here, we still have the sin and cos that will help each other out. Very nice. And I will just put down the dx right here. And then, of course, we can do u sub. I'm going to let u equal to just sin to the first power. And the reason is because when I differentiate this, I will get positive cos x. And you see, this is just to the first power. This right here, it's exactly what we have on the top. That's the du right here. Very nice. So now this is the integral. I figure I should also put the du right here just to be consistent. But anyway, this right here is the du. I'll put it on the side. And here we have 1 on the top over 1 plus sin is our u. So I'll just put on u and then square that. And then all this is the du. Now, when we integrate 1 over 1 plus u squared in the u world, this right here gives us the inverse tangent. Notice, this is the original version, okay? The inverse tangent. 
the regular version, right? The original version. And the input here is u, like this. However, u is sinh. So just put that down. So in the end, we have inverse tangent of sinh x, like this. And with that, we are done. So. Okay, before we go, I wanted to ask you, do you know someone who likes to ask, how do I get better at solving problems, or how do I get better at math? Well, if so, I have something for you. Check out Brilliant.org. This is the holiday season, and you can help to spread the love of math to your loved ones by gifting them a Brilliant Premium subscription. This really excites me because it's such a fun way to nurture curiosity, build confidence, and also develop problem-solving skills that are crucial to their schools, job interviews, or maybe even their careers. And Brilliant's thought-provoking content breaks up the complexities into bite-sized understandable chunks so that you understand them much easily. You can go from curiosity to mastery. And now you can go to Brilliant.works slash BlackPenRepen and grab a gift subscription to help your loved ones spark a lifelong love of learning. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you guys so much for checking out Brilliant.work.